Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TCG Worlds 2017. Now as you can see, um, Australia just took place, today is Monday but I'm still in Australia so this is pre-recorded. Um, but this deck, Houndoom EX Gumshoes GX, did pretty well at Sheffield Regionals. So I don't know if this got played in Australia, I don't know if this did well in Australia or not, but I have a feeling that it probably did so based on that um, that's why I'm featuring the deck I hope um, you guys are interested in seeing how it works and everything um, I wish I had this before I pre-recorded the Darkrai Giratina matches from last week but alas I didn't and I really needed to get ahead of of schedule with this so um, let's review the deck list really quickly and let's start playing some some fun games. Now, Houndoom EX, its main attack is Melting Horn. You get to discard the top two cards off of your opponent's deck, no questions asked. So Houndoom EX is the main focus of the deck, but you also get Gumshoes GX. Now, its ability allows you to see your opponent's hand every single turn before you attack. So that's really good so that you can make the best decisions. For example, if they don't have a way to switch out, you can Lysander. If they don't have any energy, you can remove energy with a Templar Grunt. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with having information from what your opponent can possibly do. And you also get access to the GX attack Gumshoot Chance, which has a really good synergy with this tech strategy. Gumshoot Chance deals 10 damage plus 50 more damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Now, one main strategy to beat Houndoom Mill is to just tack up energy on, an, on a big attacker in case they get removed and then that big attacker eventually overwhelms whatever you do have. So Gumshoes punishes that by 1-hit KOing whatever your opponent might be powering up. And with a huge 210 HP, it's very unlikely that your opponent will be able to 1-hit KO you um, before you get a chance to use Gumshoe Chance. So. That's really important, really, really important, and it, your opponent cannot be passive and not attack your Houndoom to prevent you from from retreating or from promoting Gumshoes, simply because if they're not attacking Houndoom, you're discarding their cards from their deck for your deck out win condition, so um, it's all those factors that make Gumshoes really good. Um, I generally thought when I heard about this deck that it was gonna be paired with Raticate still because the energy removal from Raticate seems really good but alas um, the list this list got the 11th place it was published in one of the European uh, trading card game sites and it didn't so that was a surprise to me so we have a 2-2 line of the Gumshoes we have one Bunnelby which is like a mini Houndoom but can also get back resources and we get two Shaman EX so those are the Pokemon, we only have 7 Fire Energy, we don't really need too many more, and we do have a bunch of different item cards and supporters. The first thing you will notice is no Sycamore. Now, the reasoning behind this, according to the player who played this, is because you usually don't want to discard like your Hammers or your Max Potions, you just um, you want to draw extra cards, so that's why he has Lily instead. Um, the 2 count gives you okay odds, I guess, to get it on turn 1. Uh, but throughout the game, if you use up your cards and then you get to Lily for 6, that's almost as good as, as a Sycamore. And even you, if you Lily for less cards, um, you still get to keep important ones like Max Potion or the Hammers for, for future use. Then we have the 4N, which are really good because you will very unlikely be taking any prize cards from your opponent. Um, so ending them down to very few cards allows you to... Um, even though it goes against like your deck out strategy because you probably end up refilling their deck um, if you refill their deck with cards like verse seekers or end that they wanted to use in the late in the later stages of the game and you hit those off of the melting horns then that's really good for you and we have the two lysander to manipulate whatever our opponents have in the active spot we have four team flare grunt to make sure we can remove energy and delay our opponent's strategies we have one Team Rocket's Handiwork to potentially discard um, decks off of our opponent's deck, um, aside from the ones from Melting Horn, and we have one Team Skull Grunt in case our opponent is um, hoarding some energies in their hand or whatever. Then we have two Floatstone and two Fighting Fury Belt in order to retreat and increase the HP of the Houndoom. 
We have four Verse Seeker, four Ultra Ball, and four Trainer Snail, all consistency cards. And we have four Max Potion and four Crushing Hammer in order to keep our Houndooms alive, keep Gumshoes alive, and to continue with the Energy Denial, along with the two Enhanced Hammer. And not only that, we also have one Captivating Pokepuff because usually your opponents don't want to bench any other Pokemon so that you don't trap them with a Lysander because they want to keep all their energy onto a single um, active Pokemon. So Captivating Pokebuff forces them to bench things like Shaman, things like Hoopas or other high retreat cost Pokemon that you can end up Lysander... Uh. That you can end up Lysandering up into the active slot to buy you more turns. And to Supra to recover the Houndooms, to recover energy, and to potentially recover the Bundle B as well. So that's the deck list. Um, let's jump right into the games. And if you saw the announcement yesterday on Sunday, because I still should have made the announcement despite being in Australia, the other deck we're gonna showcase is another deck that did well at the Europe Regional. Umbrian, Umbrian GX Energy Denial, so look forward to that. Um, it's actually one of the decks I am considering. After seeing it on stream and after playing a few games with it, it was honestly really, really fun to use and really good, like better than it looked on paper. So that's why I'm actually considering it. And yeah, we'll see what happens here. Um, it'll be interesting to see how... Um, how Sheffield affects Australia because oh boy this hand's not that good um, like based off of Anaheim what we saw was a rising Cardivore and a drop in Mewtwo and a rise in things like Decidueye which is exactly the deck we are now up against apparently um, so either it's Plume or Plume Decidueye or Decidueye on its own Either way, yeah, there's the Oddish. It's not a great way to start off the match when you're going second. Um, yeah. There's a Sycamore, wow. So my opponent discards a ton of evolutions and the B drill. And this could be really, really weird. If my opponent gets a turn one Valplume, that's pretty much game for us. But if we manage to string a series of Lysanders and we keep using Melting Corn like we don't even need to Lysander the Vaplum we can even Lysander um, a Decidueye or whatever um, Gumshoes GX could also potentially be good there's a Gloom and there's a Vaplum so that's game <laughs> and that's this that's definitely the power of Vileplume. Um, if you get it out on turn one, your opponent pretty much, like, you know you're not gonna play. Like, you can just win games outright if you get Vileplume on turn one. You can definitely just outright win games that way. So, I do expect a lot of Vileplume. I definitely expect a lot of Vileplume uh, for Australia. A lot, a lot of Vileplume. Even the Revitalizer, yikes. gets back the Beedrill because he already has the Valplum. There's a Valplum to finish his turn, so in his first turn he went through 26 or 34 of his cards. And we don't get to do anything at all here. We get to deal 10 damage with Tackle. And we get to Lysander because that was our top deck, the Desuji, the high retreat Desuji. But that's it. And to say things are not looking good would be an understatement, <laughs> honestly. Feather Arrow. And Hollow Hunts. Yep. Makes sense. Probably gonna grab a Sycamore, the Energy, and the Lily. Okay. Makes sense. So, can we survive another turn? No, we can't, so let's just concede, so... <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that you really can't do much against a turn 1 Valplume with that particular hand. And a lot of decks are definitely not prepared for high... Um, for item lock. 
Ah, uh, oh boy, we might actually be up against a mirror match now. So you can see how Sheffield just took place and it's already affecting or having an effect on what people are playing. Um, there were some very new and exciting decks, such as this one, such as the Umbrian Energy Denial, such as uh, the Desiree Valplum, which we did see at Anaheim. John Kettler used it. We, I did feature it last week. But um, who knows how good it actually... Um, I mean, it, and it ended up winning Sheffield Regional. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. And it ended up winning, winning Sheffield Regional. So that's how good the deck actually is. Um, John Kettler was very close to to getting top 8 as well in Anaheim and who knows what would have happened then. So yeah. Okay, it is a mirror match. And our hand, our starting hand is definitely not stellar. Um, I am generally at, a, generally at a loss as to what to do here. I mean, I don't need the Fighting Fear belt, right? And I would love the Super Rod, but I will most likely... <laughs> what? Are you seeing these? I priced... <laughs> I priced the three Houndoom? Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> I actually priced the three handle. Okay, let's take a look at my opponent's hand. We will discard the, um, the energy, which is great. Because he doesn't have any other. And because I did see the team floor grunt, I'm just gonna retreat and pass. Now, I'm probably going to want to use Bunnel B to recover the super rod and the energy simply based off the fact that my opponent um, <sighs> two versus seekers he has a team for a grunt but he only has one right so i'm gonna rototiller back the energy or rather yeah no i don't know i guess the energy and the super rod. Thankfully, I did top deck another one, so that's pretty fortunate for us. Now, I don't know what my opponent is top decking at this point in the game, but we should see the team flurry grunt here. Oh, he, he found an energy. He, uh, he flips heads on the crushing hammer and discards to win. <laughs> so that's a double. A double versus seeker double N discard for my opponent. Now I know he has the team for a grunt right here. So I'm gonna return the energy. Because that's what I need to potentially get going. I'm using a one card hand. I mean a zero card hand. And I'm gonna put back a versus seeker, I guess. That makes sense to me. Now, who's gonna top deck first? <sighs> that crushing hammer head, though. Like, if he... There's a team for a grunt. And there's a super rod for my opponent. We do have the advantage that we can put things back with Bonnel B. And all he's doing is using up resources. And he passes. What do we top deck? A crushing hammer. So we pass. <laughs> This is probably one of the most boring mirror matches, I guess. Maybe. He gets a versus seeker for that. For the Team Rocket's handiwork. He okay. <laughs> because I hadn't clicked on the animation, the Broken Heart told me that he flipped double tails, which is cool. Wow. And he top decks the energy first. Get rid of my gum shoes and a crushing hammer. Okay. Can I flip heads? Yes. Thank you. Now. 
Do I end here? Is that my best play? I think it is. I think if I play conservatively, like returning resources and getting rid of his, that might be the best case scenario here. Drawing three max potion though, that really sucks. That's really bad. That is actually extremely bad. <laughs> I'm gonna return the energy and a versus seeker. Oops, I can't choose both. <sighs> Basically, I'm playing to outlast my opponent, but the things I'm drawing are just not helping me. All three max potion, I would rather them be in the deck and we're in to discard them. That would be a lot better for us. That would be a lot better. He gets an energy, gets a crushing hammer, gets tails, thankfully, plays a trainer's mail. Finds a team for a grunt, which we don't have. Man. And gets rid of two trainers' nails. I find the energy, but I need to get rid of his energy. And I do find a team for a grunt. That's cool. I'm gonna wait. Use a captivating poke buff until next turn. I'm gonna put back the energy and the versus seeker. Ah, oh, oh. <laughs> I keep trying to click two cards, getting ahead of myself when uh, the game asks you to asks you to do it um, like once per turn or. One by one, rather. Ah, I really wish I drew some things better than the max potions, though. That's the third team for a grunt. And he decides to go for a shaman. Discarding an enhanced hammer and another rule trouble. Uses Captivating Pokeball to see my hand. He sees my triple max potion, my Lysander, and my Captivating Pokeball. Um, plays a Trainer's Mail, grabs a Versus Seeker. So that's bad news for the next turn. And. Okay, so he doesn't have too many things either, but I can Lysander. The Shaman that makes it less likely that he melting horns next turn. Makes it less likely. Trainers mails for an N. I hope he plays the N. Yeah, he plays the N. That's cool. That's definitely cool. Hopefully he doesn't get a fire and a float. Hopefully he doesn't hit those two cards. There's two fire in the discard. Plays the trainer's mail. So now we have um, ends, team, team flare grunts, and versus seekers in my hand, which is pretty cool. I get a super out, but I think I'm gonna keep that for now. I wish I had the team rocket's handiwork though. I just pass here. <laughs> this is gonna be a really long game. Probably the only one in the video. <laughs> Probably the only one in the video, unfortunately. I mean, I did feature the turn one Valplum. Team Rocket's handiwork. One hits, that's okay. This card's an energy, but that's also okay. Um, I'm gonna keep the float zone as well in my hand. Basically, okay, I guess I will play the super right now. Because there's, I can return three cards, and I pass here. <laughs> I know, not the most exciting game, but at least you have to put some thought into it, you know. Now he gets the gumshoes. He gets to see my hand every single turn, but that can also affect the way he plays. Because 
he sees that I have a floatstone. He sees that I have a ton of team fair grunts and versus seekers. Um, he has less cards now than I do, which is good. Um, I think my opponent's best play here would actually be to. Huh, Gumshoes has a 2 retreat cost. Gumshoes has a 2 retreat cost, so I might actually be okay. I really wish I had a 1 fire energy though. If I get a fire energy, I'm gonna be in a really good position. He sees that I top deck an enhanced hammer. <laughs> Not that big a deal. I'm holding on to three verse seekers though. <sighs> but that bun will be. Okay, now I need to Lysander up the gumshoes, I think. Ah, and that's perfect. That energy top deck is great. That energy top deck is fantastic. Now he has to rely on his only float stone to potentially um, retreat. And I'm gonna discard one card and I'm gonna return the super rod. Okay, but this is really good now. This is actually really good. Because if we're playing the same deck, which we should be. Like, I'm holding on to the floatstone for whenever he does decide to Lysander me up. <sighs> okay, he flips tails, that's perfect. Um, two Verse Seekers and three Team Flurry Grunt for my opponent. So maybe I should go aggressive instead. But see, the thing is, I, yeah, I think I should go on the aggressive here. Simply because um, I could hit the right cards from him, but like an energy, but also because my three houndum are priced. <laughs> That's something I think I had forgotten up until this point. I definitely need to take that into account. Because if for some reason I lose a bundle B, that's game for me. So let's just borrow here. A crushing hammer, that's great. And a fire energy, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. He was holding on to a super rod. Makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Hmm. He's a search the premises. I apologize for the low frame rates. I realize some videos this ends up being good, some videos not so much. There's a Lysander, so we might be put in the same position. But like he knew I had the the floatstone immediately, so I'm just gonna keep using Burrow. There's a shaman, not really relevant. What I want to see is like versus seekers and team floor grunts. Houndoom not really relevant. Is there something I would maybe want to return? Okay. I think at this point in time I want to get rid of this. And I already ha and I can find the gumshoes because I do have the uh, the floatstone. So let's take a look at my opponent's hand. Team skull grunt, houndoom, ants, and gumshoes. Okay, so my opponent still has them to refill his deck, although he won't be refilling it too much. <sighs> Hitting that team flare grunt is great. Hitting that Team Floor Grunt is great. Absolutely great. The Fighting Fury Belt irrelevant, but the Team Floor Grunt, really good. Really, really good. 
And yeah, like if we hit a floatstone, that's gonna be game. If we hit the floatstone in my opponent's deck, that's definitely going to be game. Wow, we get a ton of fire energy. I think that's really good too. I actually think that's really good too. I'm gonna make my deck just a little bit thinner. Um, it should be indication enough that I actually don't have um, Houndoom me X in my deck. And we do see two ends, a Lysander and a Verse Seeker. So my opponent can't consecutively Lysander, but I do have fire energies. And I hit another fire energy. That's just great. That's just the best feeling. The max potion, irrelevant. Um, Surge the Brim says he's gonna see my three fire energy, and that's definitely going to be really disheartening for him. Oh no, never mind. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Mm, that's still okay though. I can put them back into my deck. I can definitely put them back into my deck. And that ensures that, like, he doesn't have infinite Team Skull Grunts. Is that the first one he uses? Yeah. So he does have one Verse Seeker. He might want to use the Team Skull Grunt once again and then Lysander. He might want to do that. Where's the Seeker? Yeah. Oh no, he uses Team Rocket's handiwork instead. Flipping double heads. Flipping double heads. That's okay though. <laughs> I'm not even bothering to look at his hand apparently. But I can return the Super Rod. And... I can return the fire energy. Simple as that. Simple as that. Rendering his supporters pretty much useless. And how many energy have I discarded at this point? I've discarded only two though. So it's really unfortunate that he thought he probably has like at least two priced, I would say. He must definitely have at least two priced. There's an energy on the bundle B. Does he find the float stone though? If he does, that might be an issue, but I really doubt it. Okay, no, he passes, great. So, 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 so. Let's try and find crushing hammers. Okay, no. What does my opponent have in his hand then? Search the premises, two fire energy, a Lysander, and a Gomshus GX. So if I do this, he only has one option. And I just borrow here and that should be game. That should definitely be game. He probably has a lot of energy price though. I Discard the end, which is great. If it lights under the Shaman, I have the energy to retreat. And that's pretty much the only thing he can do at this point. Um, I guess he does have one Verse Seeker left. And it did top deck an energy. Oh my gosh. If he uses the GX attack, he KOs the Bunnelby. <laughs> <laughs> if he uses the GX attack, he KOs the Bunnel B. Uh. uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. I'm gonna put the Bunnel B back, obviously. And I'm going to Team Flur grunt the energy away, right? That's my play. 
Yeah, Ooh, because if he retreated and started using Roto Tiller, I would have been in a very, very bad position. <sighs> wow. With all three Houndoom EX priced. Is that game? That should be game. Yeah, that should be game. <laughs> well played, man. Well played. Oof. That was intense. That required a ton of thought. A ton, a ton of thought. I'll just use my GX attack for whatever. <laughs> for 10 damage. <laughs> and there's the victory. So yeah, um, pretty, pretty interesting matchup. Um, I guess... I guess I'll play another game because the first game didn't really showcase what this deck can do and the second game was interesting but didn't really showcase the power of Gumshoes, didn't... Like, we really want to play against something a bit more standard-ish, like a Darkrai, like an Eveltal, um, hopefully no Greninja, hopefully no Gyarados. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I am pre-recording this and I still need to do a ton more videos. A ton more videos. Okay, well, it looks like we're up against a dark type deck, which is cool. Which is cool. Okay. Gumshoes really wants to feature. <laughs> it really wants to feature today, apparently. Finding a floatstone could be a little bit problematic. We are going first though, so that's cool. And it is Eveltal, so the floatstone doesn't even help us here. Because it's a Fright Knight. <clears throat> wasted Trainer's Mail. Hugely wasted Trainer's Mail. Um, I'll bench the other gumshoes and I will end here. I wish I hadn't played the trainer's mail now though. No energy. No energy, double bear seeker, and a shaman, which I definitely don't want to bench at this point in time. I'm gonna have to remove. Like I'm gonna, my mission here is to prevent this Eveltal from retreating, or Lysandering, Lysandering it up again and again and again and again. Either way, like he knows with the DC he exposes himself to have the energy removed, and he must be thinking, do I, do I dig into my deck? Um, do I not dig into my deck? Things like that. Because every sycamore he uses helps us. Every like gets us closer to decking him out. Okay, my brand finds an end. I might actually want to Lysander. They velt all myself. This card's an escape rope, which is great for us. And a darkness energy. But the, the escape rope discard is really good for us. Really, really good. Goes for a Travis, so he's trying to shut down his Eveltal's abilities, but he has one floatstone on the active, and he discarded another floatstone. Um, so retreating that Travis is gonna be really difficult for him. Like, generally difficult. Now, I mean, I would love to go find a Houndoom right here. But I don't think I need to just yet. I could also buy, find the gum shoes. Mm. I mean, fine. I'll try to discard the energy. Nope. And I'll use Shaman. 
Hmm. Okay, I find an energy. So with that, I will do this. I will discard the Team Flare Grunt and the Super Rod. Not a fan of discarding the Super Rod, but I don't think in this match it's gonna matter too, too much. No Float Stone, but <laughs> do I want to hit for 10? Not really. I'll just retreat into the Hound and pass. Uh, with two Float Stones already in play, one in discard and one on the Eveltal, and one escape rope in the discard pile. Unless my opponent has Olympia, um, or he finds his last, presumably last float stone, we should be good here. We really should be good. And he does hit it. Wow. And he might be playing four. Definitely could be playing four. Hmm. Okay, so I guess... <laughs> Man. Okay, so I guess I have to... Lysander Velt on the X now. <laughs> and I top deck the float stone. Okay. Maybe it's better for me. Uh, I generally don't know though. Yeah, I'm gonna Lysander up. I could remove an energy as well. <sighs> Can't believe he found the float stone. So I should have Lysander the Evelt all instead. But I thought odds were in my favor of him not finding the float stone. Here's a fire energy. So that's also going to be a problem. The issue is I haven't been able to get rid of cards, to get rid of resources that he has. Um, here I do get to N. And Taurus can also... <sighs> Come on. No energy still. Um... No energy still. I can pass though. I can definitely pass here. I just I have to be patient. That's all I need to do. I have to be patient. I have the max potion. He cannot KO the hound room right here. He has Team Skull Grunt, are you serious? That's a terrible card on Ivelto. You're not a denial deck. Wow, he chooses to retreat. That's huge. That is actually huge, I think. That is actually really good for us. Um, okay, if I flip heads here, I already flipped tails. Oh, I already flipped one tails. And I do find an enhanced hammer. Awesome, okay. So we're 0 for 2, but we can get rid of that energy. And we're just missing energy, that's all we're missing. Um, I'm saving the max potion because whenever he is able to attack us once again, um, we can max potion the damage away. His best bet, yeah, is to power up the the Velt X at this point. So I might be forced into Lysandering up the Taurus afterwards, if I get a chance. So I've already used up three Verse Seekers and one Lysander. 
Now... <sighs> That's okay, though. I think. That's okay. <sighs> well, no, it's not okay, because I finally found an energy. Okay, I discard a darkness, though. That's cool. And so he will probably be forced to either N or Sycamore or Lysander. Probably will end though. So I'm gonna pass. I think. No. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna touch the energy. I'm gonna retreat into this Jungus and I'm gonna recover the two energy I've already used up. And I'm gonna pass. Hopefully he ends. Hopefully he didn't top the gun energy. Because Gumshoe's GX is still really good. Like it can punish that if the X. If it ends up getting super greedy. Where's the Seeker Lysander? Did he really top deck an energy? <laughs> he built all hammers, that's just ridiculous. Lysander up the Yungus once again. And passes. Okay, I get a Lysander. I guess I'll use my max potion now. I'll pass. <laughs> He's sick of ours, okay. So he really wants energy. He finds that this he <sighs> I really wish I had something. <laughs> A Lily, an N, something. 90 damage. That's why I used the max potion the previous turn. Okay. So. I get a no trouble. So I'll just pass here. <sighs> Hello. Does he have Fighting Fury Belt DCE? No. Man. Okay. <sighs> I want something. Now I can punish that Evel X with a Gumshoe's GX, but I'm just, I'm not drawing anything. Nothing at all. And now he pretty KOs everything. Okay. <sighs> I haven't used a single Melting Horn. A single one. How is that even possible? I should not have retreated, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 170 damage. There's the gum shoes. So now we just need an energy. Now we just need an energy. If we hit an energy, we should win. It all comes down to this top deck. Well, I guess Gumshoes can take one hit. And... nope. He has a life the first Seeker for Lysander for a game. Ugh. Man. We used one N. We used one, one N. 
all game one end. Oh, he even has special charge. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You have special charge. Wow. Well, usually it's a good idea to use melting corn, but in we did wow. The first game we got turn one Valplumped. The second game, all three Houndomy eggs were prized, and this game we never drew a draw supporter or an energy. So in 45 minutes of Houndoom, I never got to use Houndoom's attack. <laughs> oh well, um, one of the drawbacks of this deck, definitely very few resources to draw. Um, like you have a lot of utility cards such as Max Potion, such as Team Flare Grunt, such as Crushing Hammers and Enhanced Hammers, but you end up um, kind of dead drawing at a lot of points in the match if things don't go exactly your way. And things definitely didn't go our way. Um, so nothing I could have done there. Um, uh, really frustrating. But anyways, guys, that's all for today. Thank you guys for seeing this. Please leave a like on the video if you can. And I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye-bye.